There it is. Oh, phew. Okay, good thing my microphone was turned off because I was just telling you all it was Carl Sass's fault that I'm late today. But you didn't hear me say it, so I can pretend like it was because I was pouring myself some more coffee. And welcome, everybody. My name is Rob Appel. I am a quilt maker. I think I'm live, and I know I have been quilting all day long. I got an early start this morning because I'm hitting the road, and I really, really really, really want to take this quilt with me. So welcome everyone. I'm super excited you're here. I know I'm doing the worst quilters foul of all times by having coffee near all of these beautiful quilts. Let me get my comments up and running while I settle in here. Oh, there he is, the guilty party himself. And I see Dawn's out there and Jeanette. Uh, is the sound up now, folks? I can see the board running. I think we're good. So yes, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me know where you're coming from. Let me know what the weather is like. Let me know what kind of project you're working on. Uh, feel free to chat amongst yourselves, chat amongst yourselves. I see it and I don't pay a ton of attention to all of the comments. Uh, if you're new here today, yes, we're gonna go live for roughly 30 minutes. I would love to do some more machine quilting for all of you. I've got some closer cameras set up and we're going to do some announcements and I'm going to move this coffee because it's making me uh, a little bit nervous here. So let me just get this out of our way. Of course, I need one more sip while we get involved there. And um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and get the video up and running. Uh, for all of you out there, that is right. We are now at 55,000 subscribers and we are gaining in light years, folks. This is incredible. I'm super proud, super excited, and super thankful to all of you out there in our quilting community. Um, so thank you for being a subscriber. If you have not already, please hit the subscribe button today. Smash that like button. But most importantly, please share these videos with your friends, the other folks out there in your quilting community. I've seen a real spike and I believe it's based on these free motion machine quilting videos. Um, and I do apologize. We'll talk about uh, last week's video a little bit here in a few minutes. I didn't do the best camera work and I, and I know that, but the benefit is, is the quilt's not finished. So we're gonna move forward doing better camera work in the future. Um, but there's a lot of new quilters out there and I know that free motion machine quilting is intimidating to many of us. And so this is a really basic quilt. It is a wonky log cabin, which means the stitches can also be wonky in it. You see what we're doing here? And so anyways, we're just gonna spend a little bit of time towards the end of the video today playing with this as we go. So if you have comments or questions about free motion, you are more than and welcome and encouraged to put them into the feed. I will check them before we put the gloves on and start sewing today. I want to run through some of our comments. Um, I was saying welcome to all 55,000 subscribers. Also want to remind everybody out there we're over a thousand members in our So Well private Facebook group and so make sure that you check that out as well. I have a link in the description and I'm doing my best to put links in the description for all of the different quilts and the projects and different things I talk about today because of that coffee I do know I go a little bit fast and so I'm trying to make it easy for you all to find the supplies uh, the things we talk about are all available through stitchinheaven.com of course and so at any rate um, I'm trying to make sure that those links are a little easier and that's just down there in that description below you know right below the subscribe button um, speaking of huge announcements, I promised you last week, and so here it is, starting yesterday, but going through the entire weekend, we are having our biggest sale of the year. I think it's the biggest sale in three years. So we're doing our spring cleaning sale, a giant de-stashing of all kinds of great stuff. There are more fantastic deals than I can even admit or talk about or uh, say or whatnot, but just hit the button. When you go to our website, stitchinheaven.com, just click that big white button there that says check out special offers and it will take you to this page and you may shop until your heart's content, but I believe the sale ends on Saturday night. I think it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday of this weekend. So we're on Friday if you're watching this live, if you're watching it recorded, do not let this opportunity pass you by. It's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, as well as we go through our announcements, you know we're doing our All Texas Shop Hop, and I'm so um, excited but, but disappointed. I forgot to grab a picture. Um, I, I'm sure it will be on our 
social media, but there was a couple that came through, I believe, yesterday, and they have now completed their entire passport booklet of the All Texas Shop Hop. So we were their last shop hop in all of the shops that they were doing, and so that's a lot of fun for those of you who are participating in it. Um, I was kind of wondering how many of you could really get it completed, and I can see that uh, we are only a few weeks into April, and we are making that happen. So that's really fun, and we appreciate all of you out there um, that are being safe on the road as you speed from quilt shop to quilt shop, of course. Now, this is going to be a fun one. Next week, I believe it's a Tuesday. April 16th and 17th is a Wednesday, but Tuesday uh, I will be presenting during the uh, Benetex Fabric Live, uh, virtual live event there. So my time will be at 4.30 Eastern, so that I believe that's 1.30 Pacific, and it's going to be really exciting for me. So exciting for me at the moment because I don't even uh, have any samples yet, but for those of you who heard what I just said and you're thinking he's going to do a presentation about all of his new fabrics in four days from now, but has nothing nothing to show for it. Well, yes, that happens a lot in the world of quilting and designing because of the flow of things. The fabric's somewhere in the mail. And even so, I was talking about, I was going to remake this project and I have now remade the project using the New World's fabrics here. Let me set this down. I'm going to go overhead so you can see how awesome those all look together. So beautiful quilt, but you'll notice there is no stitching in it, right? So part of the fun of what's going on right now is I am waiting for, I have designed two quilt backings, or I guess it's one quilt backing in two colorways. So the colors that are coming are going to be perfect for the back of this project. So of course I want to use my new glow dots wide backs. It's a 108 wide back. Um, so that's also in the mail. So right now, just so you can track what I'm really, 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 really saying is Tuesday, I pack. Wednesday at 4 a.m., I leave for an airport for another big quilting adventure. I would love to have both of these quilts in my suitcase with binding on them. So we're going to be a little busy this weekend if all goes well. Uh, if not, hopefully Tuesday night, um, I will at least have some of the supplies arriving and stuff. But it's a fun thing. It's an exciting thing, but it also helps me set my pace. So I've had a very, very exciting week making sure that I left time to get these quilts finished if I possibly can. Um, it's just one of the adventures us designers live in. Um, okay, back to our announcements here. Don't forget about our OESD Let's Celebrate Party coming up. This is an in-person embroidery event. You don't want to miss out. Also, this is super cool. We talked about it last week. I made the announcement. Asheville, North Carolina. We are doing a quilting retreat that we call Land Ahoy. November 17th through 22nd. It's going to be held um, at the historic Biltmore there in Asheville. And I showed you some fabulous pictures of the um, location. And we have two instructors that will be there. And we have two quilt projects. And then if you're lucky at all, you'll get to see my aunt's dog, Bailey, because Bailey likes to... Uh, well, Bailey lives close and, and frequents often. So at any rate, those were some cute pictures I brought up last week and I wanted to make sure any of our new followers out there uh, didn't miss the opportunity to see the cute pictures of Bailey. I have the grateful list coming up here, but I realize there's a couple of other things that I wanted to jump kind of into. I also have a couple of quilt photos of all yours to share. So um, how many of you got to enjoy the eclipse this week? Um, so feel free to let me know um, what you thought of the eclipse. Now I went out in California in my front yard and that's the best picture I could get. And no, I don't believe it was eclipsing much. I did like the way the lighting was changing in last year during our quilt show that happens every October in Quitman, Texas. I was taking pictures of the quilts and the really cool uh, muted lighting. So this quilt here, this is the Bird of Paradise. I threw it on the ground. I just thought this was one of those cool pictures where you see concrete and a crack running through a beautiful soft cloth quilt. But I love the way that sunlight does things to quilts outside. So that was my attempt at the um, playing around during the solar eclipse. Again, basically a fail. However, my friends in Texas did not. Look at this. Oh my goodness. This is my favorite photo I have seen from the eclipse so far. And I want to say a big thank you to Kyle Goyer. And I got Kyle, if that's not your last name, I apologize. But folks, this is super cool. So let me take this off the screen real quick so you can enjoy the photograph. And while you're looking at the photo, I want to mention any of you that have been on one of our Stitch in Heaven cruises, you've met Dana. 
So Dawn and Dana are our, our quilt hostesses that are on the cruise ships. It was Dana's son, Kyle, who took this picture in his backyard in Texas during the eclipse. And I just think it's phenomenal. So it's really, really great to have an extended family of quilters and event planners. And Dana, thank you very much for making that photo available to all of us. Kyle, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Just thought that was an incredible photo. I would love to see what you all did uh, with your photos. Um, maybe we can do a collection for next week or the week following. I cannot guarantee I will be live next week. I'm off on an adventure. I will do my best, but I cannot guarantee I will be live next week. But if you'll send me your photos in, I've got my email address somewhere down here, but it's just rob at stitchinheaven.com. Send me your photos from your eclipse photos or photos from your quilts and we'll put them up for all of our community to enjoy. It's really fun way for us just to kind of grow that way. So at any rate, um, again, thank you to Kyle for that awesome eclipse photo. And while we're here, let's just jump in to the quilt photos that came in last week as well. Um, so here we have a beautiful patchwork. And um, so I know the gal as Carly, I think it's Carolyn is how you say it. Um, anyways, if I'm butchering it, forgive me, Carly, because that's how I know you, of course. And then uh, another really fun one while we're blowing through our announcements a little bit here. Um, gosh, I do love that quilt though. Is this here, and you may recognize this. So thank you, Julianne, for sending these in. Um, this is actually the Arabella quilt, but in black and white prints. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so check this out. So look at the center of this quilt real close. And now, if you will, check out the center right here real close. So if you haven't been paying attention, this year I've started on one of the block of the months with all y'all, I almost messed up, all y'all. And I chose the Arabella block of the month by Wing and a Prayer Designs because one, I want to get a little bit better at my patchwork. And I know that Jenny and Tony had designed a pattern that would really help me improve. And I do feel like I'm improving. I also wanted to just to do something that was fun to sew along for all of you. But I guess I can brag a little bit. Stitch in Heaven is probably the largest provider of block of the month kits and now that we're doing so many of our kits as pre-cut meaning that you have every fabric cut down to the base that you need whether it's a triangle a rectangle a square a strip so that you're ready to just open your each month's kit and sew and go these are wonderful and i know that many of you out there in our quilting community are doing more than one block of the month with us a year so i really didn't want to miss out on any of the fun so i had to jump in with arabella so you can see right here this is now i'm, a, I'm a, i need to stay a month ahead of you all so that we can produce the videos get them edited and everything so let's back up up. Next week's video will be the Arabella. Oops, I got Julianne still on there. Sorry, Julianne. <laughs> I'm not really paying attention. Okay, so next week, Arabella block number three, right? There's that block number three, but in order to show that off, this is really cool. So here's block number three, and here's the block number fours. And once you get to the last set of instructions in block number four, we get to put together our center. So this is actually the center of the quilt, as we saw from Julianne's black and white here. As I go back real quick, isn't that incredible again? So now we're gonna start building out more and more of what you see month by month as we go. So I'm gonna be sewing on the Arabella block of the month all the way through. Folks, I do apologize. We sold out of our kits early on for this one. Um, but the next one that, that I can't say that I'll be stitching on, but the next one that I know we have pre-cut kits available from Wing and a Prayer is called Tonga Canyon. It is gorgeous. It's a little bit more in the muteds, the coppers, the teals, the turquoises. Um, and you can um, sign up for this. This is the Tonga Canyon block of the month. It begins in August. And I think you're gonna really enjoy sewing along with that. And I'm pretty pumped up, like I said, to be doing um, this Arabella. It's going pretty dang terrifically for me. I'm having a blast with it. And I know a lot of you are sewing along. Um, okay. Oh, wow. There's a lot of wonderful comments coming in that I'll have to check. Oh, I do see this one uh, about the connection being very choppy today. 
Are you all experiencing a choppy connection? We're generally broadcasting in 1080 high def, but from four cameras and a remote microphone. So if anyone else is having an issue, please let me know. If you're having an issue and you haven't adjusted your settings in YouTube up to high def, um, try that because it will make all the quilting you're gonna see here in a few minutes hopefully look a lot more clear. Um, at any rate, I'm gonna check a couple of comments, make sure I'm not missing anything else. Fantastic, everybody. Okay, so then now what I wanna do is something we do every week, which we call the grateful list. So uh, it's a lot of just fun, um, just ways for me to remind all of us what we can be grateful in a, in a week's time. Uh, so if you'd like to put things that you're grateful for in the comments, feel free. It always feels good just to write them down and acknowledge them. So here we go with my top four for the week and pretty fun. We had family in town. So uh, my sister-in-law, Margaret, came to town. So that's my wife's sister, if you couldn't tell. My wife is in the red and black stripes, Margaret there in the green. And of course, this was a couple of months ago, we took these pictures, really fun. There's Precious Ruby, my daughter, our daughter there and that's the three ladies goofing off having a blast and if you're going to embarrass two of them you might as well embarrass all three of them and so that is the number one family time on the grateful list now let's talk about productivity i'll tell you what folks i was mentioning a moment ago but i have had an incredibly productive week getting ready for the virtual fabric show getting ready for the big adventure so we've gotten like i said more Arabella Block of the Month videos shot and ready for editing. 504 half square triangles created, trimmed, pieced back together last week for this beautiful quilt and only waiting on the wide backs, not procrastinating at all, only waiting on the wide backs. Shot three more videos on how to do machine quilting in single motif kind of focus. So we did a wishbones, um, a ice cream swirls and a triangle straight lines and we're going to be putting all that together here in a few moments with that super fun so very very productive when i say viral videos though folks you know i was mentioning about that 54,000 oh, excuse me 55,000 subscribers i just cannot thank you all enough for helping the channel grow by sharing the videos by commenting on all the videos by liking the videos I think we've picked up a close to 250 subscribers alone in two days just from the video about the free motion last week and basting it onto the table. So here's that little ad. Hey folks, it's Rob Appel, your favorite carefree quilter over on YouTube from Stitch and Evan. I'm super excited to spend the afternoon with all of you doing some free motion machine quilting on this easiest log cabin quilt ever. I've got a tutorial on how to make it, but today I want to teach you how to baste a small, excuse me, a big quilt on a small table and then we're going to move it over to the machine and start playing with some swirls and curls in our free motion machine stitching. I know you're going to love the tutorial. Check it out over on YouTube. And like you can see here, uh, last but not least, we have new places. And I'm very excited because uh, next week I do get to go to New Orleans. And I haven't been to New Orleans since I was about five years old. And I'm sure I will have a bit of a different impression of it. I'm looking forward to. And if all goes well, yes, I plan to go marching down the streets, waving a quilt with hopefully some outrageous jazz band playing when the Saints go marching in in the background. Uh, stay tuned. That may be next week's live video. I don't know if it's going to happen, but wouldn't it be cool if it did? So anyways, that's something I'm pretty dang excited about as we put the grateful list away. Um, just so many things we can always just stop for a moment and remind ourselves. Sometimes even for me though, coming up with four items can be a bit of a challenge, but when you really think about it, I know we are all quite blessed, especially if we can just spend a few hours every week making quilts. So let's do that right now, I think. I'm gonna make sure this coffee cup is getting lower and lower on supplies and out of the way again. Better do a comments check real quick. Oh, that's terrible. Choppy, 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 it keeps saying. Hmm. Okay, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, so now I'm seeing uh, changing to 1080 seems better. So I'm not sure if choppy and blurry are the same words we're, we're hearing. Um, 
internet connection wise, I'm, I'm connected. I can see that up on the top here. And uh, Judy says it's flowing pretty smooth. Okay, glad you all enjoyed your your eclipse out there. Oh, I probably better put on my extra glove here that I've made for my machine quilting with one finger because, so I can control the control system over here. I think this is the one. Ah, yes, the official live video. <laughs> All right, so here we go, folks. Um, let's go ahead and talk about this real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and shift to the overhead camera. Um, and now is the um, apology for last week, uh, last week's video. Like I said, it has been viewed uh, almost 25,000 times, I believe, in a day and a half. And it was about basting the quilt in a smaller space and that was very successful and very well shot but unfortunately we moved a bunch of cameras out of the way and we forgot to activate one which was the most important camera which was going to allow you to see what happened here so this is the actual stitching that was going on in the video that posted on wednesday based your own quilt at home these are the swirls and curls we were trying to do but like i said because of what happened then and not being able to really show. The basting information was so important, we went ahead and rolled the video out that way, but I've spent a bunch of more time, I'm sorry I said it that way, a bunch of more time, but now you can see we've got some straight line quilting going on over here and a bunch of fun stuff. So what I'd like to try to do now is work over into this little space. So I'm gonna go into my needle camera here, making sure it's active. This camera can sometimes be a little bit challenging. And we're going to work quickly down into this lighter color space so that you can see what's happening. I have a variegated thread going. And right now, as I usually do with my warming up, I'm just doing my basic swirl design. Kind of an arc, and then a circle, and then an arc back, and a half arc. This is a great filler. It allows us to move in a lot of directions. Okay, now, one of the things I'm gonna point out a few times as I try to roll this and keep it so it's easy to see and I've got good light for everybody going. We can move the quilt and rotate the quilt if the needle's not moving. Once the needle's moving in free motion machine quilting, I need to kind of keep my hands like this as the director if you've never seen this happen before. So I'm gonna be moving my paper under the pencil as I'm drawing but I'm not gonna be rotating that paper on the table while the pencil, AKA the needle, is moving. Okay, so let's just, let's just do some quilting. Let's just talk. Um, oh, ACJ's here. Great to see you, ACJ. I'm glad you and Carl are communicating. Fantastic. And um, if you'll all just keep me posted, if this is working good and you can see and hear it, I will keep up with it. If it's not and just annoying you all, then of course I'll just sign off early and get back to my uh, coffee. I've got a couple different cameras set up. So I've got this one for the back end. So you can kind of see what's going on here. And again, I've got the needle camera. So let's just play for a little bit. We're gonna play nice and close, work our way in. And earlier I was practicing doing some other motifs, like this wishbone style. And earlier in the quilt, I was doing it in a specific space between binding, border, sashing. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, of course, if you've watched me do this before, you'll know that speaking while quilting and while standing up is not easy for me. So I'm gonna to try to describe what's happening, but the minute I start talking, usually the stitching goes south. keeping my hands constantly moving closer to the needle. One of the tutorials I was working on today was talking about how we can move into some of this fun organic straight line quilting to just break up a bit of the feel of the design. 
but instead of always keeping it going in one direction, I like to play with it. I like to move it. I like making like mazes, like a labyrinth, and then working around it so that things don't seem so linear. Remember, this is a wonky log cabin, and that wonkiness really is going to lend to any kind of wonky machine stitching motifs, which is a great way for a person to experiment with designs. What happens when you do big bumps and then close bumps? What happens when you put straight lines next to curve lines? What does it look like? What does the machine feel like? One of the things I'd like you to try to pay attention to, I am paying attention to it, is the sound of the machine. Notice the pace of the machine. Notice the, the way that you can hear it running, right? That is how I'm keeping up. I am not using any sort of stitch regulation or anything. I'm just, uh, what do I want to say? Listening to the rhythm of the machine. I can hear if threads are going south or hanging up on the bottom, but I'm just keeping my pace going, okay? Let's see how that looks. I'm just going to hold it still for a second while I read a couple of comments. Maria, I'm glad you found me too. Excellent, I'm glad you're here. All right, well, let's try this camera then for a while. I don't see any complaints yet. So with this back camera, you can maybe watch a little bit more of how my hands try to stay uh, accurate. And I'm gonna try to quilt into this direction. So I'm quilting blind. I can't see the stitches that have happened and that can be a little bit risky. And when that happens, I quickly get back into an area where I've been working. So I immediately moved up this way because what we always want to be doing is working from where the quilt stitches were in the center outward. Like a pebble being dropped into a pond, we want our quilt stitching to ripple from the middle to the shore. Anytime the thread really matches, into the fabric, I don't worry about doing too good of a job because you're never going to see it. But anytime I have this contrast, of course I want it to look as good as possible. I'm going to start to set up now for that wishbone I was trying to do earlier. This one's a challenge because you're doing a backwards loop, a loop-de-loop, an alley-oop. And the other thing we talked about in the videos as I was preparing them now is finding a good stopping point. Having a place where you know where your hands are at, where you can stop, where you can come back to your stitching. Okay, so even though I'm at the top of that arc, it's easy for me to know that and come down. Now I made a mistake and I went the wrong direction, but because I've been taught that none of it really matters. I'm just going to go ahead and make that wrong direction part of my new design. And that's again what I mean by creating a maze or a labyrinth that allows us to work what has happened into the new motif that's about to happen. Teachable moment, do not quilt into those safety pins. <laughs> now. Sorry, Marlin. I know I might be affecting your job security. Marlin, folks, is our sewing machine tech. The gentleman who cleans and services all of the sewing machines at Stitch in Heaven, regardless if it's a Bernina, a handy quilter, or any other model, even if we don't sell it. We can take care of it for you. But I tell you what, if you run over safety pins all day long, Marlin's going to get mad at me. So don't let that happen to us, folks. Always pull your safety pins early. You're welcome, Marlin. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to pop the safety pin out real quick. Let's do a quick comments check here, see how everybody's doing. Okay, fantastic. Nancy's enjoying it. ACJ is in love with everybody, which of course we knew. That's awesome. I'm going to keep quilting for everybody because I'm having a blast and I got to get this quilt done. I think I'll go for just a few more minutes and then we'll do one more comment check. And um, if you would like for me to try a design or a motif, 
That's what this quilt is all about. And I can't promise I'll do it well, but I promise I'll try it. So type it into the comments. I'll, I'll give a couple of you the opportunity to, we'll call it Stump the Quilter today. That's right, we've got a new game show live happening called Stump the Quilter. So you go ahead and name a design and I will do my worst of it. <laughs> See, it's all in expectations, folks. It's all about expectations. All right, so I'm just playing again. And you'll notice I always go to the design that I'm most confident with when I'm trying to speak or, or, or just kind of entertain a little bit because it's easier for me. It comes natural for me because I've been doing it for so long. And that's the other thing I can really talk to you all about is practicing. Again, noticing I'm rotating the quilt, but the needle's not moving. Okay, we need to practice our moves. We need to practice our theories. Right now, I have also a lot of quilt hanging off the table, so I'm kind of tucking it in to my workstation so that I don't have that weight falling off into my lap. Now we're just going to pick up those designs now again, but I've made it so it's easier for me to see where I'm at. Right? Remember, this is what I'm looking at right now. This is what I can see. We are also talking about doing some fun square in a square style designs. This is a really easy motif, but it goes a long ways because it can be endless if you're willing to cross your threads. And I found it to be much easier than doing triangles because triangles come back together in that third point. So that makes it a little trickier because you keep coming back to your starting point where with a square, you can kind of run past it. But what I do like doing is again, playing with a motif and then just decorating with it. It's just doodling, it's just zentangling, but with a lot of different opportunities for design. All right, let's see if anyone's over there ready to participate and stump the quilter. Let's see if anyone's done it yet. We're gonna take a request. Uh, is this a F? I don't, I don't understand. Uh, I'm sorry, Maria. I don't understand what an FAC event is. Okay. Um, so I'll let you answer that question, Maria, if you're still out there. Nobody wants to play Stump the Quilter with me today, huh? Doesn't sound like fun to play Stump the Quilter. I'm pretty glad we're not playing Stump the Quilter, but if you'd like to play Stump the Quilter, I'm gonna give you a few more seconds. I know we've got a bit of a delay that happens every now and again. And um, then other than that, I'm gonna sign off. I see I've gone a little bit long. And oh, a McTavish design. Babs, did you really just do that? I don't know exactly that I can do Karen McTavish any justice because I haven't studied her work much, but I love the fact that she has her quilting motifs tattooed on her arm. I have been blessed to stand with Karen in an elevator in Ontario, California at Road to California. And I'm trying to remember a little bit about what her work looks like. It's kind of, I think, what I call the ice cream swirls, where you're building designs that, that flow with each other, but they're not like the maze. They're more, let me just see if I can do one. Okay, so here we go. Babs, you decided to play Stump the Quilter. I'm about to lose at Stump the Quilter, but I'm in a perfect spot. Let's try it again. Um, I'm really sorry uh, to <laughs> you, Karen, if you're watching out there, um, because I don't have a great vision in my head right now of one of your specific motifs. So I'm gonna just suffer my way through this. I think actually, folks, this is gonna be the best here. No, no, you gotta be able to see me do it. That would be really cheating. 
I put myself in the guillotine. Let's see it happen. Okay. Golly, at the moment, I'm so wishing I would have taken one of Karen's classes. <laughs> All right, here we go. Needle cam. So, I'm nervous. Here we go. I'm just going to quietly stitch for a second to see if I can pull this off. But it's kind of like what I've referred to and was actually trying to teach recently is like what I call the ice cream. So what we can do is we can run like a series of S curves, bringing them back into a location, but then growing our start point. So it gives a really neat fluid and open style design. You can do a lot with it because you can come back in and add elements like that circle right there and then play off of it. And again, if this is not at all something that Karen's done, I am so sorry. But you'll start to, let me get back into something that we can see a little bit better. And that is the cool part of it, is it does offer us the ability to work either within our patchwork motif So maybe the easy way to describe it is it's a, it's a series of pseudo repetitive designs following a not straight linear format, but more of a fluid S curve style format, at least in the ones I've seen. I'm hoping you can see it developing there. It's a great fill. See how that's kind of coming together. Now I've got a bit of an open space. It's starting to build a bit of a of a issue or could be a wonderful blessing. If I quilt this taut around here, then that's going to create a bit of a pucker that I could come in and do some real micro stippling or something in here and do some fantastic things. Um, Doodling is the way to go. Some really cool bump feathers. Um, okay, so I was double checking on the metabolishing designs. Okay, so let's answer a few questions here that have just developed. This is important and this is why we do the live videos so that we can engage with our community and we can get everybody quilting all weekend. So, thank you, Babs. Ice cream swirl, yes, I think that makes sense. I'm hoping this is what you were kind of thinking of for your McTavishing designs. It's the basic X, right? I know she's amazing. Um, secondly, um, no, it is not better to stand up while you're free motion machine quilting unless you're standing at your long arm where you're moving with it. The only reason I'm standing here today is because I'm producing a live video, I'm sewing, I'm operating cameras, I have a bit of a narrow space, but look, I wasn't sure, so I even did bring my stool with me because if I'm really quilting at this machine, I sit down, I put my foot control off to the side so I can be here. What I do like to be is at a decent distance. Standing right over it actually makes me focus too much and I can't really see. So being at a little bit further distance away helps me with my guidance, helps me see what I'm doing and I really do like that. So if anything, um, yeah, seated is better and you want to be able to make sure that you kind of keep your arms level and flat. So this is a challenge and standing to machine quilt for me is mostly because I am trying to entertain all of you and educate at the same, um, same time. Um, I saw doodling is the way to go, of course. I love that. Oh, Friday afternoon club. Thank you, Maria. I like that. Absolutely. Well, what's happened over time is we've all developed friendships here and we think that's great. Um, um, 
Fantastic. And I'm sorry, now I'm enjoying reading all of your comments as well. Okay, so Carl asked for pebbles, and I think this would be a good time to drop some pebbles in into the area up here. So let's finish this out today with pebbles, because there's a secret to pebbles that I learned a million years ago from my other friend, Barbara Chappelle. And I'm going to now go ahead and just sit because I've got my stool here and see if this helps me a bit. So the secret to a pebble is to go ahead and do a complete circle. Right? And then if I'm going to do more pebbles, I'm going to do more circles. And it's completing the circles. Or maybe I should say this is bubbles. Always going around. Also known as pebbles but different than cobblestones. So a cobblestone is gonna give you the opportunity to do erratic shapes that just fit into those group sections, right? But not necessarily perfect circles. So if you're not one that likes to go over your threads, then you're more of a cobblestoner than a pebbler. One of the things I will ask you to try not to do if you do something like pebbles is don't start with a big circle in the middle and a bunch of little circles around the outside because we all know those will start to look like flowers pretty quick. And also, it makes it a challenge to go anywhere else. So what you really want to do is a variety of circles while you're working on those. And as a reminder, just come all the way back around and go out into the other direction. And just so you all know, I am watching a little bit of the comments. There's a lightning bolt snuck in when you weren't looking. <laughs> but again, I also just filled in that space. We're going to come in here and fill in all of this space so it doesn't pucker up. Now I'm tucking right back into that McTavishing style design. And I can come back around and finish it off in the middle here by doing something similar. And moving the way out. So folks, I'm gonna say thank you very much for spending some time with me today as I'm working on my quilt. I definitely need to get it done so that I can show it off when I get to New Orleans next week. Maybe I will be marching through the streets of the French Quarter with my quilts. Wouldn't that be fun? I'm going to go ahead and stop the machine there. Come on back over here to wave and make sure. Let's see. Thank you, ACJ. I love it. Okay, well, you got a lightning bolt, Jennifer, a little bit in there if you were watching close. Uh, again, Julie, I'm so glad you're here from Ireland. That is wonderful. Folks, I really appreciate you all being here with me for some more free motion machine quilting. If you have not checked out that awesome video we posted on Wednesday, please do so. Make sure you share it with your friends that are struggling with ways to base their quilts. It's a really easy walkthrough. Oh, I want to answer a couple of the questions and I forgot to, but I'm using clamps that I normally order from, you know, I, it's funny, I'd set them up. I'm just going to take a second. I normally order the clamps on the internet and I buy the right size. So I just figure out how thick my table is, right? And then I just figure out what I needed. But funny enough, the last time I thought I, you want to measure this distance? Apparently, <laughs> you'll get a kick out of this. Uh, it was measuring this distance. So no, those are not big enough for most of anything. <laughs> but you want about a two inch wide or bigger. The big, big ones you saw me using on the video on Wednesday, I had just run down to the Walmart in Quitman, Texas. It's one of the only shopping meccas in all of Eastern Texas there for us. And so I had to buy a couple of bags of variety sizes of clamps. But I'll tell you, those clamps really do make a distance. You just want a difference, excuse me, you just want to pull 
pull your fabric backing nice and taut. There was another question, and I'm going to end with this. The question was, why are there two different shades of green or two different backing fabrics on the back of your quilt? And the answer is because I didn't want to waste too much of my own fabric designs on the back of the quilt. The two greens matched enough. It's just the way I make quilts. And you know what? I think that you all do appreciate that. So thank you folks for supporting me and this wonderful channel we have going here at Stitch in Heaven. I am so very, very blessed to get to sew with all of you every week. Make sure you check out the Arabella tutorial coming up on Wednesday. Do not forget about our big spring sale that is going on right now online and in the store. Make sure you take great advantage of everything we have to offer for you all at Stitch in Heaven. We so, so much appreciate you out there. Okay, folks, I'm signing off. I'm going to actually go get more coffee and get right back to quilting on this quilt. And we can find out in a week or so if it actually made it all the way out to New Orleans with its binding on. Folks, appreciate you being here.